ALC201 Exploring New Media Module 2 Who's Watching Whom? Great. Now that we're done with that, let's get to learning. I sound like every teacher I've ever had. The person we're talking about today is this guy, Michel Foucault. It took me five minutes to pronounce his name correctly. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly now, but it took him 58 years to be an established philosopher and historian in France and internationally for that matter. So he's a huge advocate of this construction, the Panopticon. Let's see what I can remember from first year philosophy. You stick one central tower and then all around you have your prisoners, students or patients, people that you basically want to keep an eye on. The prisoners know that they've been watched, but they don't know when, so they behave. At least that's the idea. The idea of the Panopticon can actually be related to the Gestapo during World War II. Gestapo. Gestapo. I don't know how to pronounce it. I can only pronounce one thing right at a time. It would literally be a case of terrified Germans, like, not wanting to do anything wrong because they know that they would report someone if they saw something happening so then they wouldn't do it themselves. The risk was too big. Everyone would do it, everyone's the same. People watching people. You see the parallels that I'm making? Brilliant. I suppose Foucault's idea of the Panopticon is pretty relevant. And that's the contention. There's actually a lot of debate around Foucault and his ideas, whether or not they're relevant for today's time. Is he relevant or is he redundant? Is he refined or is he redundant? <sighs> Thesaurus is just so handy. Personally, I think the idea of surveillance is terrifying which is actually something that Adam Brown suggests that we should see surveillance as something strange because there's people watching us at all times. That's pretty fucking scary. It's the main reason that I wear hoodies whenever I walk around campus at night. It's also the reason why I cover up the webcam on my Mac. I don't want anyone knowing what I'm doing or recording me while I'm sleeping. In Foucault's Discipline and Punishment, he covers four main themes. We have torture, punishment, discipline, and prison. The first two are probably the most interesting because they relate to the problems that were encountered in France at the time. So you've got this sovereign power, aka France, whose custom is to inflict pain on an assailant in order to reflect the wrongdoing that they've done to society or the actual sovereign state. But what actually happened is that people would sometimes side or idolize the person who's being tortured and then try to free them or just create an all-out riot. Now this is Foucault's remedy for violent punishment in France. That idea went out the window and they introduced a different method. There is actually a school of thought that disregards the Panopticon completely, saying it's irrelevant and they bring in, bring in this idea called the Synopticon. Now it's basically the Panopticon but with social media aspects. There's this idea that Shoshana Zuboff introduces, another name that I can't pronounce, in her book, The Age of the Smart Machine. Now, she talks about the Panopticon and information technology. So, you're an office worker, you work a nine to five job, and you use a set computer for all of your daily duties. The boss has installed software that actually tracks everything that you do, every keystroke, every initiation of a task, and then the end of a task. So the idea is that He's always watching. He may not be sitting at the chair watching what you're doing, like in the Panopticon situation, but every single one of your actions has been recorded. So they can be drawn on at any time and basically there's no escape. There's a lot of debate as to whether or not this actually improves the workplace. In my opinion, it does. At my work, I remember the main managers, they went on vacation and I was told that they had this app on their phone that you could actually go into and look at the security cameras remotely. I was so attentive to every detail involving my job that I just freaked myself out so much. So in conclusion, Foucault's theories are completely irrelevant for today's society. They haven't been outdated at all, regardless of the school of thought, although they do bring up a lot of good points. For example, there's the idea that the Synopticon, unlike what I just said, is actually a replacement for the Panopticon instead of a kind of fine-tuned version of it. Also in the fantastically named Zygmunt Bormann, I think I got it right, he wrote this essay called On Postmodern Use of Sex and that basically criticises the whole idea of the Panopticon saying that it has moved on to the idea of seduction. Thank you for your time, I hope you learnt something from this and if you didn't, I hope that everything was right, let me know if it wasn't. Probably was, I cite my sources.